Right, morning guys. Lovely morning. Well, lovely for some who can fish, um, even though the weather is a bit uh, bad. Yeah, it's Tabel, uh, more on Sharks Bay side. Northeast of Pumped yesterday, so the sea is a bit rough on the left hand side of Tabel. Um, I managed to get the day before yesterday a Monster Man crab, deadly bait for a brusher. Um, I'm going to put it here in the gully. Um, normally, a spot where the brusher moves around, all around these rocks this time of the year. We're in October, beginning first week of October 2017, and uh, I'm using a hoodlum hook, a 6 -o. and I'm just quickly going to rig. Rick the monster crab, it's a mustad hoodlum. Now these crabs are quite scarce and difficult to get. Unfortunately when I got it, broke the pincers off. So I'm going to make a plan to still use them, because they're lovely. But what we'll do is we'll just crush them a little bit. Move the box around a bit. Now what I'm going to do, I haven't tied my hook line. As you can see, I'm using a 0.75 um, Siglon fluorocarbon. What I like, nice and stiff between the rocks. Um, the right line for that, you can go heavier for the brusher. And then to rig the actual crab, we're going to do it through this two hind legs or there. And I took piano wire quickly, number 14, and made a little bait needle. through I'll use it for a pincer as well then what we do is we work the hook in there shank it was in the freezer so it's still frozen nicely through the leg there it's a pity that joint came out I don't like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make another little incision from this side and get that line through there. Because it's too loose in my opinion. You can use a bit of cotton but I'm trying to stay as natural as possible. A brusher can be finicky sometimes. secure it properly so that it doesn't come off quickly and that's really what I'm doing okay I think I'll use this big pincer slide down to it looks still nice and proud all right now that's our bait ready to go quite excited now I'm gonna tie it onto my trace just use a proper power swivel Kingfisher power swivels then I've got 0.76 leader line fluorocarbon and I've got a much thinner this is a 0.55 fluorocarbon I'm using at the bottom uh, obviously when you get stuck so that it breaks off quickly you can even add just one granny knot in there. Some crab. Tastes very nice. I love crab though. Curry, not curry, doesn't matter. Alright. Now that's supposed to be the number one bait for the brusher. Let's hope they, they move into this gully in front of us here. So we can uh, get stuck properly on a, on a nice fish. Yeah, now tell the sizes. Uh, Go up to about nine kilos. I don't get the really big ones, but still, I mean, anything over four kilos in a brusher is a memorable catch. So let's do that. Let's get a brush on camera. Now, guys, the water you can see in front of me—that's what we call washing machine water or working water. It's working nicely. There's broken reef in the water. Uh, when you come here on a calm day, on a low spring low. 
There's a reef going out there, there's a reef going, with scattered reef everywhere here, ideal spot for them to feed. Um, they obviously sit on the points as well, where the divers will always see them, they'll tell you they're at the points, they see them at the points because the spear fishermen can't come into the, the gullies, there's too much working water, they can't really see well there. They only see them before they come into the foam, but this is where they come and feed, in this foam, you look for a nice hole or a place where they'll come and feed and you put your bait smack bam in there. Similar water for bronze bream and all your rock fish and that scratching fish, everything moves in to this working, working water. If you look to my right, that's now ideal water for scratching for stumpies, for pawners. See the working banks there. We've got the wave breaking onto the bank. Nice working white water and that's ideal for looking for edibles or any of your fish really because there's, there's a bank, there's structure or there's reef. Any type of structures where they move to, to either ambush fish or look for prey that's washing up and out. And, uh, yo, got a little bit of a halo here on the right, so let's hope that's something. But um, that's ideally where you're going to get fish and you work your way. This deep blue gully here, more for nighttime, your cob can move in there. In daytime, the fish want to basically camouflage or hide and ambush prey and ambush food, but they're in the working water and at night as well. But the only time you'll put a bait on this gully is when the shad moves in for the shad or uh, you know, at night time you can fish in gullies like this. And that's my personal opinion, that's where I fish. But that working water is what you want to be in and not too much sand must kick up. Um, a little sand every now and again, a puff of sand every seventh of eight wave, that's fine still. But if it's continuous, just sand um, mixing up in the water there, you must know it's not ideal. Guys, no, no, this is an outfit I've grown very fond of. Look, I love my BG reels, but this, this is just superior. The, the Saltus, the new Saltus that came out, with the Max Seal technology, a lot of the technology of the Saltigos has worked its way down now to the Saltist. Um, so fantastic little reel this with sealed bearings and everything. I've got J-Braid on, 30 pound on this. And then uh, I'm fishing the Saltist 13 foot 6 spinning rod, which is light, feather light. So obviously you can feel the quality when you touch this rod. A very nice, light, comfortable combination for fishing between the rocks for bigger fish. It also comes in a 12 foot 6 and an 11 foot 6, so you'll step down depending on what you do. For the, for the bronze bream and that type of fishing, you can even catch brush on it. The 11 foot 6 is adequate. 13 foot 6 are obviously a bit bigger setup. Um, quite positive that I will be hooking something big enough, um, as you should be. But um, yeah, that's pretty much the setup. I'm using a Hoodlum 6 hook for that crab. Remember, your hook needs to be big enough uh, to suit the size of your bait. Using a small crab, you can go to a 4 0. You're using a massive crab, which um, obviously won't necessarily be practical for them feeding, or it could be. It'll go up to 8 0. But um, yeah, in general, that's the setup. And just for general, I catch bronze bream on this as well. Your general scratching on this 13 6 or I bring the 11 and the 12 foot 6 with as well. Very nice copper bream, Herr Karolin's brother. Just came across next to me and caught a nice uh, copper on a blob bait, just a chocker blob bait, bronze bream trace. We're using the mustard, uh, XV, the wide gape carp hook, and number four, which we normally use for a front screen. And here we go. Grab my rod again. Here you go, look at that. Okay, guys, that's what's left of my crab. Got chomped up by the fish in the area. Um, could have been a muscle cracker to get that off. Can't understand what else. And I felt a bit of uh, bites, but they must swim away and they must eat it properly. So I'm switching over to a bronze bream trace as well. Like I said, it's the mustard wide gap carp hook, the XV number four we use for bronze bream and all the bream. The kingfisher little floats. Yeah, I've got fluorocarbon 0.50 Siglon. Yeah, put a much thinner one. This is a 0.43. 
using a four ounce sinker this year is quite rough. Um, Hat is casting, uh, well, putting out a blob bait, which is working very nice. Nice general bait to use. For scratching, I'm going to put a prawn bait to see what, what we can learn prawn. Well, for the first cast at least. If he catches another fish on the blob bait, I'll, I'll switch. And then Tyron, my son's also throwing a blob bait. And uh, we're going to work that hole a bit. There should be a couple of fish in that hole. Very nice. That's our first bronze bream, guys, that we got this morning. And Gert is cleaning up here. Good. Hey okay, guys, this is a nice bronze bream. Look at that. How's that for size? Look at that. Lovely, lovely bronze bream. Exactly what we're fishing for. Very chuffed with it. Okay guys, as you can see, the weather has changed terribly very quickly. Um, it's turned horrible, big south west coming through. So we're gonna pack it up for today. Nice bronze bream, but the sea is getting on its head, yeah.